Yo, I'm Bob, totally blind since birth, into Power Rangers, got the Shout Factory box set in my hands, talking about Season 2, Episode 12, or Episode 72, if you like that better. This one's Green No More, Part 1 of 2, and it premiered on September 27th in 1994. I wouldn't see this two-parter until it aired in reruns in the summer of 1995. I had Fox at the time, but I was never home in time to watch a lot of these season two episodes as they premiered. My brother, man, he talked this two-parter up a lot. And I think it started because I'd wondered what the final battle of Tommy as the Green Ranger was like. I kept thinking I'd missed something. And he said, oh yeah, man, you really did. It's a, it's a really cool two-parter. And uh, luckily it aired while I was visiting him and my little sister in Memphis, Tennessee. So he got to see my reactions. So, I mean, I'd seen most of season two, I think, by that point, you know, on weekends and, you know, I, sometimes I'd get to watch them after school with pals. It just depended on uh, different circumstances. But yeah, we get to see Tommy and he he's bummed because he's thinking, well, he I mean, he's at the end of his power cycle. Zordon and Alpha are doing another bio scan on him. And he's not really expecting good results. Kimberly's trying to get him to think positive as he's, I'm guessing it's Tommy, bouncing this basketball quite despondently. And he just receives this mysterious message from future Tommy. I remember watching this for the first time and thinking it was really, really trippy. Uh, not knowing how in the world future Tommy was sending past Tommy this, uh, this warning about the final battle approaching. He needs to remember his communicator. Of course, the message is garbled, so Tommy's not really getting it. And Kimberly's there too. So, I mean, she's, she's co corroborating his story. So it, it's cool that he's always got a ranger or two around to, to support him whenever weird stuff happens. Weird stuff happens to these kids on a daily basis though. So yeah, uh, he, Cool that, uh, that she was there with him. Zed is just about ready to finish this short story that he metaphorically referred to as the Green Ranger's powers in the Green Dream. That final chapter has been written. He's ready to launch uh, his final attack on Tommy. And he's got this crystal. I'm not sure how he managed to create this thing, how it taps into the Morphin Grid, but I like that uh, it's going to siphon off the Green Ranger's powers, the last of his powers here. I wish we'd gotten some explanation as to where he got this thing, how he created this thing. Um, it's it's a piece of Power Rangers lore that uh, I do like that we got in the Lightning Collection. If you get the wedding two-pack with Rita and Zed, you get that crystal that's in this two-parter. We took a look at that along with uh, a Lord Zed last year on this channel. You can take a look at that on the Power Rangers playlist. Yeah, but he's got the crystal going for him. In Angel Grove, we see Curtis showing up. I love how he made his debut there with that big dance-off that he was doing. Well, it's just him dancing, but yeah, he's probably wooing the ladies. Richie is there too. So if I had seen this episode as it premiered in September of 94, I would have probably thought, hey, you know, who's this guy? Is he going to be a future ranger? Uh, who is this guy? I, I think I thought that with Richie. I, I would see him, I think, showing up during uh, his episode when it premiered. Um, but yeah, they didn't do much with Curtis. I think he and Richie were both supposed to serve as uh, White Ranger Red Herrings. You know, they were they were supposed to divert kids from the, the trail of the true White Ranger uh, whenever the white light would air. I did see that when it premiered. Can't wait to get into those episodes, by the way. So yeah, um, Tommy's talking about the message he received from future Tommy. Bulk and Skull, they have been menaced by a group of five surly teenagers, as Lord Zed calls them. And they run away scared. They don't really want anything to do with these with these kids. See, Bulk and Skull, they're all bark, you know? Um, they they try to be bad, but they, they just, they just, they're just not cut out for it. Um, Zordon love them anyway. They're just not cut out for, for being bad. So they run scared. They're like, oh, we uh, we got Power Rangers to find. I think the kids uh, put them in this, I don't know what it is. It sounds like a big trash dumpster, one of those rolling dumpsters. I'm not really sure what they put them in. But yeah, they, uh, they run scared. And the Rangers manage to fend off these five bullying new kids. 
They, they give a kid his lunch back. Lord Zed loves what he sees there. And uh, he, he really wants these kids to be his new Dark Rangers. And I remember watching this for the first time thinking, oh, this is going to be so good. We're going to get Ranger on Ranger action. Zed's going to, he's going to be able to make his own team of evil Rangers. You know, I'd already seen Green with evil and just love the idea of you know, dark antitheses of, uh, of the Power Rangers. So this thing was right up my alley. And uh, my brother really liked how, uh, how excited I got when seeing this for the first time. Um, he was like, oh, you just got to wait and see what happens. He didn't sound too enthused, and I would find out why in the next episode. <laughs> so uh, that's going on. The results of Tommy's bio scan come back negative. Zordon says the last efforts to restore his powers have failed. He's only got enough energy for one last battle. And uh, he's understandably bummed. Kimberly gives him a hug. She's there with him. Later on, they're collecting... They're collecting uh, seashells on the beach. I think Kimberly's searching for seashells, as one of the the five surly kids says when they show up. Of course, they're menacing these. They're menacing uh, our goody good superhero pals, the Power Rangers. Here, they're just about ready to start a fight. Lord Zed teleports them away because, well, he wants them for his Dark Rangers. And I wondered their, I wonder about their facial expressions as they show up in Le uh, Lord Zed's other world, as he calls it. They're I would imagine amused, maybe a bit scared of him, but they're bad. And I would imagine they would want to become Dark Rangers. He's like, yeah, hey guys, you know, you're going to become my new Dark Rangers. We'll conquer the universe together. How's that sound? They don't say anything. I'm thinking they're probably thinking something along the lines of, yeah, sounds good. We're not doing anything this afternoon. Why not? Hey, cool. Superpowers. So that's going on. He's got them in the other world and he creates a new monster from a, uh, I think it's that funky looking shell, as Kimberly says, and we get to see Turban Shell. And uh, this monster, unbeknownst to me at the time, is voiced by Barbara Goodson. I remember watching this for the first time and thinking, man, this guy sounds like he's constantly on the verge of throwing up. He kind of talks like this all the time. And so I remember laughing my 11-year-old head off, thinking, wow, this guy doesn't sound well at all. They lowered Barbara's voice like they lowered the pitch considerably. And I was like, man, this monster sounds kind of nasty. What's wrong with this thing? My brother was like, yeah, looks like a pretty ugly monster, man. So we would laugh whenever he would come on screen. They have to morph into action. Tommy decides to morph too, and Zed's ecstatic about this because he's going to use up the last of his powers. Turban Shell's already giant, so they summon the Zords. We get to see the Dragon Zord summoned. Uh, I guess Tommy has enough powers to, to make that Dragon Dagger signal reach the bottom of the ocean this time. And so the Thunder Megazords form, Dragon Zord, he shows up. Turban Shell, man, well, as I usually say, uh, he's feeding them their lunch. He's one of the most... Uh, powerful monsters the kids have faced up to this point. Zed calls him his most devious creation. And he's really proud of this monster. He should be too. And by the way, I wish Hasbro would make that in terms of a turban shell and the lightning collection. Man, he's got all these uh, different attacks he can do. I think he can go into his shell and actually slam into the Zords. I don't know if he does that in part one or part two. But I remember my brother describing that to me. So, I mean, it would be a pretty tall order, but it would be cool if we just got the uh, the actual shell of Turban Shell as well as him, you know, all the way out of his shell. He, he uses a, a seashell-looking staff thing, and, you know, that's that's not doing the Ranger Zords any favors at all. He uh, gives it to them so good that they, they have to abandon Zords. And uh, Turban Shell just vanishes after he uh, conducts this fight. Zed's really mad at him, and I love this scene. He calls him a worthless worm and a mollusk brain, and he's like, well, you you were about to destroy the Rangers, and you had him on the ropes? Get back down there. What are you doing up here? And apparently, Turban Shell's got to recharge uh, his shell. I don't know if it takes AA batteries or what, but man, uh, he really needs to invest in some Energizer or something. But man, he was up on that moon for just a little bit. And then he gets back down there. Um, Tommy is teleported to Zed's other world. The Rangers are understandably worried about him because now he's by himself. And Turban Shell shows up. And uh, it's, it's not an easy fight for Tommy. I think Tommy actually demorphs here. Uh, so that's, that's bringing the... Uh, 
the uh, the events that future Tommy spoke of and, and visually too to pass because Zordon notices that future Tommy's not morphed as he's delivering that message to uh, to uh, to pass Tommy there. So yeah, he doesn't have his powers now. Zed teleports the other rangers uh, to the other world. So they're all there now. They're all separated and Zed's gloating. He shows the uh, the rangers their replacements. And I love how he refers to Zordon as his mortal enemy. He says something like, just as Zordon, my mortal enemy, has created uh, five servants of good, I've also chosen five. And he just wants to do everything Zordon does. But of course, evil. And I guess in Lord Zed's mind, much better. So you're always trying to rival Zordon here. Another one of those instances in which I remember thinking as a kid, what's these, uh, what's their backstory? You know, now of course we've got that in the Boom Studios comics, which is awesome. So yeah, he's gloating. Tommy's by himself. Turban Shell's laughing at him. And, you know, he says, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. You've lost your powers. Of course, when it comes to the, the, the Tommy fans back in the day, it was the moment we were all dreading, I'm sure, because, you know, we weren't sure how in the heck he was going to come back from this. Of course, I was because I'd already seen um, the follow-up miniseries to this one. I wish I'd been able to watch this as it premiered. Boy, that would have been something to see. But yeah, it's a to be continued. Turban Shell says it's all over. And uh, boy, I don't envy you guys who had to wait a day to find out what had happened. Um, I'm wondering if there were kids thinking, oh, they'll, they'll come up with something. They'll come up with something at the last minute. But of course, we'll be talking about Green No More Part 2 next time. Be here for that. May the power protect you and have a great day.